everybody, this is Edwin the Magic Engineer saying hello to all of you from Texas. And uh, before I get into what I want to mainly talk about today, I want to do a quick note uh, about all the people that are affected by Hurricane Harvey. Uh, we're also here in Texas. We are being affected by Harvey. I'm literally running out, doing stuff in the yard, trying to get water out of the way, making sure that our house doesn't have problems also. So everybody, please uh, say a quick prayer for all those that are affected about with Hurricane Harvey that... Hopefully it blows over really quick and doesn't affect everybody too badly. Anyways, about the topic, um, any of you that actually know me in real life, in eh, real life, <laughs> not, not on here in this virtual thing, anyone that knows me in real life knows that uh, I'm really passionate about finances and I get into finance discussions all the time. And one of the things that I talk about a lot is trying to lay out the workings of our government and how they use money so people just have a reality sense on what it is opinions about it can come later on what is good and what is bad and what you think should or shouldn't happen but it's better to have a re reality check on what it actually is so we all understand and this is a demonstration that i go through with people sometimes uh, on paper not normally with these nice little graphics and stuff like that but i found the first way to make it really simple to understand is to make it more personal for an individual family so this is the jones family example and um, so what I've got drawn up here is this is the Jones family, and this is the job that the mom and dad have together. So this is their income. And if they don't have enough money to make ends meet, then they need to borrow money. That comes in here from credit cards. And then every month, the Jones family has to pay bills to the man, right? So with this example, it becomes uh, pretty simple for people to kind of relate to it to see what's actually going on. So let's put some numbers on this. The Jones family, let's say they make 35,000 a year, right? Decent income, right? Fairly average. I think the national average for income is like 46 to 56, somewhere in that range for most families. And that's household income. So the credit cards, uh, let's say, um, let's get to that in a second. Let's first focus on the bills. Uh, the bills that the Jones family has every, uh, every year, well, they got into a problem. You know, they they don't make enough money to pay their actual bills. They actually owe $40,000 every, every year. So their income is definitely not matching up what their expenses are, right? So what the Jones family needs to do is they need to borrow that difference between their income and what their expenses are. So in this case, this would be $5,000. Every year, they have, just have to borrow. And it's going to go on a credit card, so they're going to get charged interest for it. So most people will look at this and they'll see, okay, well, the Jones family has a problem, right? Because they're not making enough money to cover what their expenses are. And let's even compound the problem worse. This has been happening for a while. The Jones family has been terrible with their expenses. So the, let's, let's move this over here, actually. So the 40000 let's move it to there. And they have a large amount of debt. The debt that the Jones family has is $200,000. They do have some cash, but the amount of the cash that they have just goes right out. So let's just assume that's negligible. We're not even gonna consider that in this case because they never really keep a surplus. They have a huge amount of debt, right? So I think anyone looking at this can definitely see there's a problem. If you're only making 35 grand a year, you're spending 40 grand a year, so you're not gaining anything and you're borrowing another five thousand dollars every year so the next year it's literally going to be that right that's that's what it's going to be it's going to have like much higher numbers um then the next year after that if they stay on the same track it's going to go here and all the while all this money that they owe that they've borrowed from their credit card they have to pay interest on that and eventually the interest on this gets so big that their, their income just they're, it's never going to keep up, right? Okay, so here's why I'm giving you guys these numbers. Let's actually, let's back this one up a bit. Let's say 18,500. Uh, and there's a reason I'm doing that. If we take all these numbers, we're going to do some special math here, and it's called the multiply by uh, 100 million uh, rule. First, let me prove to you that that makes sense. If I have 3, and I'm going to add that to 5, we're all going to agree that that's eight, right? No one's going to have an issue with that, right? So let's say now I multiply every one of these guys by 100, right? Is it still the same? 
So 300 plus 500, it is still 800. It is valid when you're adding things together, it's valid to just multiply all of them by the same value and you still get the same answer, right? So hopefully we all agree. Now let's do that to these. I'm going to take every one of these numbers and I'm going to multiply it by 100 million. So that's going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now let's put the commas in to make these correct. So that's, now that's the thousands, that's the millions, that's the billions, and that's trillions. So that's three and a half trillion. Did I do that wrong? Maybe I did. I might not have added enough zeros here. There we go. Yeah, I didn't. Ha! Okay, now let's do this one properly. So we actually have it. One, two, three. Four. There we go. Okay. So now what we're looking at, we multiplied all of them by 100 million. So we have three and a half trillion, and we have four trillion, and we have um, half a trillion here is what this should be. And then we have, I didn't do the zeros on it, did I? Yep. So that's half a trillion. And then that's 18.5 trillion, right? So we all agree that that all makes sense. Now, the reason why I picked these numbers and did this, this happens to be what the United States budget is for the year 2015. Our national debt was 18,000, sorry, 18 trillion, 500,000, sorry, 500, 18 trillion, 500 billion. And the income that we pulled in was 3.5 trillion and the expenses was 4 trillion and the amount added to the debt every year was 500 billion and let's let's do that by showing you this what all these things actually are okay so now it actually can start now people can understand it the US Treasury is the government organization that's responsible for paying all the bills and when the IRS collects taxes from all the taxpayers and all the businesses, they turn that money over to the, to the U.S. Treasury. What should happen is the amount of money coming in from the IRS should equal what they spend on their bills. But it doesn't. They're always short. And in 2015, the IRS took in $3.5 trillion, but they, the government spent $4 trillion. That left them with a deficit of $500 billion. And the national debt was 18,000, 18,500,000. So then this added to this. And then in 2015, the national debt went from 18.5 trillion to 19 trillion. And then it went 19.5 trillion and now it's at 20 trillion, right? Because we're adding this amount every year. So hopefully now that basically makes sense. So this was, the, this is the situation that the US government is actually in. This is why economists, when they study this, say, oh, okay, we got a big problem. We're never going to pay this off, right? Just in the same way the Jones family wasn't able to pay it off, our government can't pay it off. And this went on for so long that this amount got so big that I want to explain why the quantitative easing program actually happened. And now let's draw in one more player to this mix. If I can find the pin, here it is. There's one more player that basically came in, and it is uh, the U.S. Central Bank, otherwise known as the Federal Reserve, right? The Fed. So what the QE program was is we weren't making enough money in income to pay the bills, and nobody wanted to buy bonds. I maybe I didn't explain that. This this the bond market. The U.S. Treasury creates these items they call treasury bonds, and they sell those treasury bonds to anyone who will buy them. But what it basically is, is a loan. People here in the bond market, they buy those treasury bonds and they give their money to the treasury. That's why there's money coming in. But the treasury owes that money back to people. So at some amount of time, they give you your money back from the bond plus a small bit of interest. And so the, that's basically the people in the bond market are loaning money to the government when they buy a treasury bond. Well, 
they started seeing how big this number here was and people started saying, I don't really want to do that. That uh, I don't really want to buy their bonds. I don't, they're barely paying me any interest on it because the bonds are paying like 1% or 2%. The bonds are barely paying anything and their debt is so big, I don't want to loan them any money. Just like a credit card company looking at the Jones family and saying, they barely make any money. They have a huge amount of debt. We don't want to loan them any money. So the market didn't want to buy those bonds anymore. So they kind of like backed off, right? And yet the government needed to borrow that money. I mean, they, they had this bill to pay. And if they didn't bring that money in, they couldn't pay their bills. You know, they couldn't balance the budget. They couldn't pay for anything. So they had to do something. So what happened was the Fed basically printed up a bunch of money out of nowhere and that missing income that wasn't here anymore, that went away, now basically came from the Fed. They were the ones that bought the U.S. Treasury bonds because no one else wanted to buy them. And what did they buy them with? Printed money out of thin air, right? That allowed the government to keep making up that money that they were missing. And so the government didn't actually go broke. But what actually happened is all this, these Treasury bonds that were sold to the Fed... They built up this huge amount of treasury bonds. Hey, how do I represent that? So all these treasury bonds over here, they built up and now it's 4.5 trillion from 2009 or so until like 2014 when they started tapering and then finished. That's how much money they actually bought in treasury bonds. And so they kept the government going by injecting that money, but that's why when they when they tapered, the stock market went flat and then just leveled off for a while and everybody was afraid of a crash because they need this much money every year. They're only getting this much. And if they're not getting it by people buying bonds because they believe in government, someone's going to buy bonds. So when everyone lost faith, the Fed went in there, printed money out of nowhere and bought the bonds. That's why that actually happened, right? So if the Fed now goes away, they stop the QE program and they're no longer buying bonds. It has to be these guys buying bonds, right? And now you know why the interest rates have to go up on bonds because if the people, that the reason why they didn't want to buy them before is they weren't getting any money. They would loan their money to the government and barely get back any interest. If they're going to get back interest, interest rates everywhere have to go up. So the Fed has to raise rates and all the rates for home loans and everything has to go up because otherwise these bond guys won't buy anything else. So the Fed's been talking about raising rates, which is why these guys started actually buying treasury bonds again. And now the government is working, but they still have the same problem. That debt, which now is, is 20 trillion, that debt is getting worse every year. And the amount of income is never equaling the amount of money that's going out. And you can't just raise taxes because if you raise taxes, you'll end up eventually getting less money because... There's a thing called the Laffiter Curve. Maybe that's another video. It's kind of basically says like, you can raise taxes until some point and then eventually people go broke and then the amount of tax money you get from taxes goes down. That's called the Laffiter Curve. And people say we're here. You know, the government hopes we're down here. They want to be able to raise taxes more, but the reality is we're probably here. Greece is here, right? Because Greece has had their taxes raised so much they couldn't pay and their economy's broke. So that's basically it. That's what I wanted to go over. Uh, hopefully that made sense and that gave everyone a perspective on where the national debt actually comes from. It's all just treasury bonds sold by the treasury and the government borrowed all that money and owes it back, but they don't have enough money to actually pay it back. And that's literally the situation we're in. So have your own opinions on what's good or bad or where it's going, but those are the facts. So bye everybody.